I'm going to go over Eagles preseason week two. Eagles traveled and played the Patriots last Thursday. Uh, it's currently Wednesday, August 21st, and it's been almost a week. Uh, I've had a pretty, pretty busy, busy, <laughs> pretty busy week. Um, so uh, it's, it feels like Monday. So uh, I'm just going to get right on into it. Um, first, I'm going to go quarter, quarter. Quarter by quarter, my words are tied right now. Um, I'm going to go quarter by quarter, going over scores, some big events, turnovers, stuff like that um, for the game last Thursday. So Eagles um, opened up with an interception by Avante Maddox on Patriots quarterback Jacoby Brissett. Avante Maddox returned it to... uh, the 45 yard line, 47 yard return. It's a great, great play by Avante Maddox. Great job getting a lot of yards after that. Uh, then Jake Elliott, Eagles kicker, kicked the 42 yard field goal. Second quarter, Joey Sly, the Patriots kicker, kicked the 51 yard field goal. Eagles turned the ball over on downs at their own 49 yard line. And Patriots quarterback Drake May ran in a four yard touchdown as time was expiring. Um, Third quarter, Eagles turned the ball over again on downs, this time at the Patriots' 37-yard line, and the Eagles turned the ball over again on downs at the Patriots' 32-yard line. So fourth quarter comes in. Jake Elliott kicks a 38-yard field goal. Joey Sly kicks a 45-yard field goal. Eagles running back Kendall Milton Kendall Milton ran in a one-yard touchdown. The two-point conversion was successful with a pass from Tanner McKee to Ania Smith. Uh, a snap went over the head of Patriots quarterback Bailey Zappi on what could have been a game winning drive for the Patriots. There were some sort of effort there, but a uh, snap went over Bailey Zappi's head and linebacker Brandon Smith recovered the ball. The Eagles went on the win 14 to 13. Um, overall, I want to start off by saying uh, I thought this game was supposed to start at 730. Uh, I guess I was wrong. It started at 7, so I missed a little bit of the first quarter. Uh, I went back. I rewatched it, so I got caught up. Um, Over uh, just some thoughts on the game. Uh, John Ross um, missed an outside shoulder catch. Uh, He dusted Christian Gonzalez that – if he caught that ball, he was he was gone. There was nobody going to catch him. Um, I think the issue on that play was Kenny Pickett's pass was overthrown. Um, it was not on target. And <laughs> um, that's kind of the story of Kenny Pickett. Uh, I think Kenny Pickett's safely competing for QB3. I know Nick Sirianni came out and said, Kenny Pickett's our quarterback too. Doubt that. Uh, Tanner McKee shown that in every possible situation he can come in and he can be a reliable quarterback too. Um, I he's he's locked that job up. Uh, in this game in particular, Greer Will Greer uh, first time he got any sort of action. Will Greer and Kenny Pickett sort of, I would say they were playing at the same level. Uh, I think the offensive line for the Eagles struggled when these two quarterbacks were on the field. It has nothing to do with the quarterback play. I think the offensive line just in general didn't play well, but when Tanner McKee was out there, he was, he was smart enough to realize the offensive line was not doing well. So it was a lot of his passes were quicker, shorter um, intermediate routes, but they were on target and that's Will Greer and Kenny Pickett. Their mind was more centered around their athleticism and trying to make a play themselves that they weren't able to do much. So um, that's not really what we want out of a backup quarterback. We want some, someone, someone like Tanner McKee. Um, I I think everybody can agree with that. I think every NFL team would love a quarterback like Tanner McKee coming off the bench. I'm sure I've heard so many people say, "Look how great Tanner McKee's doing." Um, I won't I won't be shocked if, regardless if Hurts uh, were to get hurt and McKee were to step in or not, if Hurts Hertz could play the entire year and McKee could never see a snap, I still think McKee is going to get a job somewhere else to potentially start. Um, 
he just he looks that good and he looked that good last year he looks that good this year uh no drop off in fact he looks more efficient this year and he's throwing in tighter windows this year um in terms of that pass to John Ross, um, John Ross in general has looked, uh, he doesn't look like he's going to make the 53 man roster, but he looks like he's putting on a show for another team who's pace, who's not, who's pretty thin at wide receiver. Uh, I think he definitely has a shot to make the 53 man roster, but with the receivers that are currently on the Eagles, I just don't see him finding a spot unless he's a return specialist uh, and him getting hurt in the game after he started getting returns that it's kind of disappointing. Um, I would have liked to see John Ross on this team. I think as a returner, he could be amazing with his speed and the new style of kickoffs and kick returns. I think he could do well. Um, Christian Gonzalez on a side note, the Patriots corner, uh, he was, he's, I mean, he's talented and he just got dusted by John Ross. He couldn't cover John Ross. So, um, I would, I, I could be a little worried if you were a Patriots fan, but I'm not, um, good luck. But, um, moving on to, uh, EJ Jenkins, um, Pushing the tight end three spot really, really hard. CJ Uzama got cut earlier today. Um, that's where we are currently at. So it's going to be Goddard, Calcaterra, and that third spot's wide open. Um, EJ Jenkins could be there. It could be Albert O. Um, the, it's, it's really those two. And I think EJ Jenkins has proved that he can be a nice, solid target if players end up getting hurt. Uh, I like, I liked him. He was making some great plays. Uh, he did have an injury later in the game, but uh doesn't seem like it's that serious. So uh, I, th- yeah, I think, I think he's got a, it, that was an interesting find. Uh, I think Greer and him looked really good together, but uh, Makai Becton seems to have locked up right guards. One um, Tyler Steen, left uh got hurt he had an ankle injury was out for the game and i beckton's not even getting any time in the preseason i think we all can agree makai beckton is the starting right guard so the eagles offensive line heading into week one should be left tackle jordan mylotta left guard landon dickerson center cam jurgens right guard makai beckton right tackle lane johnson um which uh, I I knew when we signed Makai Becton, I knew when the Eagles signed Makai Becton that he that Stout Jeff Stoutling could could help unlock something there with Becton because I mean he had injuries um, when he was on the field he just didn't seem right and they had him lined up at tackle and I think for someone as big as him and less agile I. think think he would be a better fit at guard and i think he's doing quite well at right guard um that i've seen so far who knows we'll see what week one holds with makai becton um i think that's probably that is the weakest spot that is the one question mark um i have no i have no issues with cam jurgens as center uh i've heard cam jurgens is doing great and he feel he's he has said in game interviews that he, that's where he feels most comfortable is center. So that, that feels good to me. Cause I think Jurgens played pretty solid last year, uh, despite some injuries. And I think with his versatility and putting that center, I think he can be a pretty good. I can think he can do a pretty good job taking over for Jason Kelsey. Um, back up, back up offensive line struggled throughout the game. Uh, they weren't able to block much of anything in terms of, being able to run block or be able to pass block, just nothing seemed to be going right with the offensive line. Um, let's see. Uh, Will Greer got some time, and cl- yeah, clearly he's battling Kenny Pickett for QB three. Uh, I didn't see anything necessarily that stood out of Will Greer. Same thing with Kenny Pickett. 
Uh, I think Kenny Pickett took a step down going into this week. Um, Nolan Smith, uh, as he's been disappointing. Nolan Smith has been disappointing, but I think he got some rhythm going in this game, uh, despite uh, a, a pass interference or a rough in the passer penalty on Nolan Smith. Um, I did think he got some rhythm going into this this game. So, and who knows what he's gonna be like playing with Jalen Carter and Jordan Davis and the rest of the defensive line because it's possible that because everybody's so focused on all of them that he ends up standing out. So I'm hoping that's the case. Will Shipley continues to impress. He he's locked RB two. Call it now. Um, Gainwell's getting very few. T- I I don't want to say I wouldn't be shocked. I wouldn't be shocked if Kenneth Gainwell got cut. Um, I don't think. I think they're trying to find a spot they can put him, and that's RB three. Uh, Will Shipley just looks very good he looks like he could complement saquon very well um i can't wait to see him in this offense because i think him in this specific offense could do very well uh starters uh as we haven't seen offensive starters play uh i'm i know some people are worried uh they're looking where's where's jalen hurts is jalen hurts gonna play uh saquon gonna play aj brown Devontae smith dallas goddard most of the offensive, well, four fifths of the offensive line, uh, are they gonna? Are we gonna see them in the preseason? And you know, I, I, I think I just want to see them maybe for a quarter. Um, I know a lot of people are, um, a lot of people just want to see them play because they get rusty to start the year. And I, yeah, I think some teams that's the case, and other teams that's not the case. Um, I think. A lot. Of, uh, I think the Eagles as a whole, a lot of their players have played with one another. The only guys who haven't bit played are Saquon and um, Mackay Becton. So, but otherwise, everybody else has played with one another. And I, I know it's a new scheme. That's the major reason why you would start them for next week. And I, I'm okay holding off until next week. I know a lot of people said they should have played their starters. Um, and you know what? That's fine. I I am okay with not playing starters at all in the preseason. Um, unless you're a brand new team and you got brand new players everywhere. So, But some teams, they already know each other mostly that you don't need to do that. The Chiefs don't need to do that. The Niners don't need to do that. Uh, The Eagles don't need to do that. The Lions don't need to do that. There's a lot of teams out there that they don't necessarily need to do that. But teams who are almost new entirely in terms of how they're built, um, maybe a new quarterback coming in, new offensive coordinator. The Steelers are another uh, one of those examples. Uh, new offensive coordinator. They have a new new quarterbacks. Uh, we who knows what they're going to look like. They have added players at receiver at receiver next to George Pickens. So who knows what that's going to look like there? Those teams should play their starters. So yeah, I, I'm. I'm okay if they don't play their starters. I don't want them to get hurt. But at the end of the day, it's these players could still get hurt week one. So it doesn't it doesn't matter whether you start them next week or not. Um it's I mean, you're getting rhythm. That's I think what everybody wants to see heading into week one. Uh Jeremiah Trotter Jr. continues to shine. This dude's <laughs> this dude's so fun to watch. Uh I I want to see him as linebacker as one of the starting linebackers but he's probably not going to he's probably going to be a special teamer because he's and he's doing a great job on special teams uh devin white and nicobe dean i think are going to be the starters zach vaughn uh, i i i don't like i i i just <laughs> i don't like zach vaughn i i just i don't see what the 
deal is. I know a lot of people want to see him at edge rusher. He's not going to play edge rusher in the Eagles defense. Uh, he's going to be a linebacker, and I don't like that. I think there are better linebackers that are backing him up. So whatever it is, what it is, I guess. Um, yeah, uh, John Ross did get hurt. He got a concussion in the game. Again, like I said, uh, I think he's doing a great job in terms of showing other teams how good he could be. Uh, but I don't, I don't think he's going to make this roster, but I, I definitely look forward to seeing what he can do on another team. And even at returner, I hope, I hope he does make the team as a returner. Uh, Tanner McKee came in midway through the fourth quarter, which was a little weird. Um, Will Greer came. So Kenny Pickett came in, struggled. Will Greer came in and struggled and then suddenly Tanner McKee is out there in the fourth quarter and led us to a game a, a game winning drive uh Tanner McKee single-handedly helped the Eagles win that game so uh yeah if you question whether Tanner McKee can be clutch whether Tanner McKee can make certain passes accurately deep passes if you question any of that over the last two years he's proved all of that that he can do anything um i am really excited to see where what his future holds whether that's in philadelphia or not uh but yeah it was it was weird seeing him come in especially that he started the game and then suddenly he comes back into the game so i don't I don't I don't know. I don't get that all that much. Um Yeah, I th I think that's I think I think that's it in terms of my review uh Ma oh, Max Sharping um looked terrible on the offensive line. I don't expect him to, he shouldn't make the roster. Um but who am I to I'm not the one making the decisions. Um, I don't know, maybe someone knows something about him that he's skilled, but he didn't look very good. I don't, I don't, he's definitely, I mean, he's not a starter, but I don't know if he's a backup either. So yeah, that's my, uh, recap of the Eagles preseason week two game against the Patriots. Um, yeah, I mean, these games are close. But they're preseason. It really doesn't matter. It doesn't count for anything. It's more about guys making the roster, seeing which guys stand out and who will be making the 53-man roster. And I think there's a lot of guys on the Eagles that I like to see. Johnny Wilson looks has looked really good overall, uh, all camp and all preseason. Um, uh, and there's other guys like Aeneas Smith or, who look very disappointing compared to what we thought we were getting when we drafted it. So uh, I, I hope some of these players can get better and I hope some of these players um, take it to the next level. So uh, only a couple more weeks until week one. So let's um, let's hope everybody stays healthy. That's, that's just what I'm looking forward to. So, all right, I'll see you all next week.